Hello everyone and welcome to my video and welcome to my new room. I am currently home alone in my new apartment and I'm bored so I thought I'd just make a video about one of the few things I talk about which is architecture. If you're new here, my name is Zoe. Nice to meet you. I'm a second year architecture major studying at Cal Poly. School starts in about two days, so I should probably be preparing, and, but instead I'm making a video about something that wasn't really talked about when I was in your shoes, probably, which is making a high school portfolio while applying to college. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to say is that you do not have to be amazing at art to apply to architecture school, okay? So hopefully that um, calms you because I know that I'm not that great at art and I was very insecure about that while applying, but it's okay, it worked out fine because, well, actually Cal Poly doesn't need a portfolio, but that's okay. My main thing is that you do not have to be good at art to have an architecture portfolio because this is not an art portfolio, okay? It's a design portfolio. So don't be too hard on yourself if you can't draw or paint. You just want to make sure that your portfolio shows your creativity and how you solve problems because as a design major, you're always going to be thinking of solutions. Your portfolio wants to show your process in doing that, you know? Oh, another tip straight off the bat would be to stay away from digital models or any kind of digital drawings that you've done. And by digital, I mean like draft, digital drafting or rendering because that's mostly the computer doing the work and not really showing your, your unique individuality, you know? Like a bunch of people can make a box on Rhino or CAD or whatever you're using, but not everyone can draw a box like you, right? All right. Let's just open up my portfolio. Oh my god. I haven't looked at this in so long. But wow. Okay. I have like something called like the portfolio, which is like the main portfolio with around 19 slides. I use Google Slides for this. So you don't need anything fancy. It's free. So yeah, I have like the main portfolio. And then for each school that I applied to, I checked what their requirements were. And I made a copy of the main portfolio and then edited the copy of it to each of the schools that I applied to. So some of them ask for specific things, like they want six still lifes, or maybe they want more information in the captions, like uh, the date, where you made it, what materials it was, what the dimensions were of the project. So yeah, just make like the main portfolio and then I just made copies of it. And that system worked pretty well. Just flipping through the slides, you can see that there's a consistency, which is key, okay? You want your portfolio to have like one font, probably sans serif because that's what architecture people like to use. Nothing too busy, not too many uh, different colored fonts. Most of it, my text is black, but I do have that bar on the top that has the color gradient. Yeah, let's just talk about the top bar. I am not that good at art, so I wanted to show my like design thinking. So I created this top bar to kind of show that I was thinking about how you would flip through the portfolio. So at the top I have like an index basically, and then as you flip through it, you kind of see which category you're in, and it has my name, so they don't forget, you know. But yeah, I hope that it like made the admissions person kind of interested in what was to come. The order of your portfolio is pretty important. You kind of want to keep like, show your best, best stuff in the beginning. You're still good, but lower end in the middle. And then you want to finish with some good pieces too. So in the beginning, I included my best stuff, which was stuff I did in my summer programs. This one, as you can see, was in Syracuse. And I just put a little caption, a title. I would get creative with the titles because that can show your creativity as well. You don't want to just call this like model. You want to like say something more about it. Like I called this one unravel because like the concept behind the model was that this form was like unraveling itself into like, I don't know, I, it's kind of hard to explain, <laughs> but that's kind of off topic. So yeah, and then I have this one. 
kind of a different project that was like a final model. And as you can see, as you flip through, it's almost the same. But yeah, I have like the big picture and then two little pictures on the side. They don't want to be overwhelmed, so I would have three pictures maximum on each slide. Like, try to choose one if you can, but I wanted to show different angles. I, oh gosh, I would not do this. See how this corner is not aligned? Yeah, I would put this corner up here and like make this aligned. But I guess since this picture is pretty long. But next, yeah, so I have four architecture things that I had. And then this page is important too because it shows the study models, which is something you'll be doing a lot in architecture school. So if you have anything that like shows the process of you making something, I would include that as well. So these three pictures are kind of showing different configurations I had. And I was explaining my different ideas and what project they were from previously. Next is my still life. So, oh God, this is so crusty looking. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, yeah, still lifes are very important in your portfolio because it shows that you know how to represent real life because well, like the majority of what you'll be making in architecture school is not fantasy. It is going to be grounded in real life. Like you're imagining yourself actually building this. So yeah, still lifes are very important. You definitely will be asked to include a lot of still lifes in your portfolio. This one was a pastel. This one was acrylic. This one was pencil. And a pro tip is just to call things like sketches or like quick study even if it took you like an hour to do it because you know, they don't know how long it took you. So if you can say you did this in 10 minutes, you know, actually probably don't lie. No, I didn't say that. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, oh my god, this is so bad. <laughs> oh my god, did I include this? All right, this was acrylic. This one's acrylic. Pen, pen. Oh, here's another thing. If you're doing still lives, make sure that you include the surface that your objects are on. So I have this line here showing that's like, that's the borderline of the table. They don't want just like floating objects. And I kind of liked this because, you know, everyone kind of does a still life of a shoe. So I thought it would be kind of unique if I drew the underside of the shoe because I feel like most of the time they just draw like that. But yeah, if you can find like cool kind of setups or cool orientations of objects that are not you know, normally conventional, I would do that. Yeah, okay, and then now we get into the photography, which is my main thing that I feel like I was kind of good at. I was very into photography, which I haven't done in a while. Meadow, sunset. This is one of my favorite pictures. And then others. So this is just like a random embroidery thing that I did because I was very into embroidery as well. Yeah, that just shows a little bit of craftiness because, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not really a drawer, but I would say I'm pretty creative. So that was like the main portfolio. Yeah, so after you're done making your portfolio, the main one, you can just go to file and say, uh, make a copy of the entire thing. And then from there, you can delete stuff because you want to make sure that you're following the instructions because if they ask for 10 objects and you give them 20 right away, you're going to be rejected because it already shows that you cannot follow directions and that you don't read things through. So make sure you're doing that. And then after you make the portfolio, you can just download it as a JPEG and then upload it wherever they want you to. If you are still confused or want to know more, just leave a comment. But yeah, hopefully that gave you some more information and helped you out. And I wish you good luck on your portfolio. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good year and are studying hard. And I hope that you get into all of the colleges that you want to. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.